Let me see where's my F ones at. Let's go ahead, Eric. Trying to wait for Danielle in my bag toy here. Boom. See what we do. Yeah. What's good? What's good? What's popping? Not that much. You know how it is. Quarantine status. Day Wait. number 45. Are you counting? Oh, no, nah, I was I made up a number. It, 45 sounds about right, though. About, what, two months, three months now? Yeah, I ain't counting, so I, I don't have any idea. This feels like normal for me. We work from home anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I, I know, well, I, I work from home, but it's also to the point where it's like, work from home, but maybe a hotel room or like a friend's room or like, you know, one of those type of things. So. Right. That's the difference. Whether it's like this particular spot right now, right here, yeah, I'm getting used to it, you know, more and more. But I would say more so on the on the have to be inside aspect of it is the rough part, you know. That's a big fact. Do you feel like it's developed any new skills in you? Like you can add something. Okay, you gonna jump right into it? Okay, <laughs> jump right on it. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me type the um, uh, life after. Let me see. Let me type the topic real quick. Life after COVID with um, the MR bad tour. New skills of the MR of COVID. Um, I would say it just, it allowed me to really, for the most part get my life together in the sense of okay you have a schedule let's work to it let's stick to it you know um actually like you can really you can get a lot of things done within the day it's like i'm trying to make my days as useful as possible you know i see how quick a day can go by um if i can like if i say if i can make sense of the time we have now the free time because like granted I used to travel a lot, so that's time I didn't used to have when it's like driving on the road for two, three hours. It's like all that, you know, plays a part. And the thing is, like, I'm a big to-do list person. And then for me to be at home and actually put a lot of things on my to-do list is, like, very, very good for me. But then to the point where, like, I could be on my to-do list and get things done, like, this whole day. Like, I get a lot of my things done. And um, just the discipline of it. Because I think it's easy to get away from discipline when you have so many other things. Like, people want to, like, you know, hit you up to, like, you know, go out, go out to eat. Like, you can easily be on a budget and someone hits you up, like, hey, you want to go out to eat? And, you know, for me, sometimes I'm like, sure, why not? You know, like, why not go out to eat? But now we don't have that option. That's not an option we have available to us right now. So it's like you get to really sit home and, like, okay, this is money I haven't spent here. I mean, granted, Amazon is my best friend a little bit right now. But other than that, it's like you see some of the things that you were missing out on that wasn't – or, like, trying to be a part of that you really don't miss right now, you know. So it's like, granted, I was never a going-out person. I mean, I would love to be with my friends. But actually, like, going out, I don't miss that part of it. So that's one of the things, like, yeah, I wasn't missing much. Like, when not going out and not being involved. Uh, what about you? Like, what have you picked up that you, you know, didn't really get into? Um, what's up, y'all? I was trying to text y'all a what's comment up? back to y'all. What's up, what's up, what's up, John? What's up, what's up? My boy, Mari. It's a lot. Hey, look, hey. Hey, look, uh, John will be happy. Watch this. Oh, God. Is John in here? Yeah, she's right there. John, what you think? Yeah. She she was just here. Uh, I thought she was, but um. That's she Kayla right here, I think. Um, what's up, bro? Um, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> hey, look, I had to get the new glasses. You know, the computer, the computer glare. I'm, I'm staring at computers all day, 
So um, I need some new glasses. So this is the new look. I need to get rid of the hat, but you know. Until then. Yeah, there we go. Grandpa Kev. Hey, look, I'm, I'm probably right into the stereotype. <laughs> Big facts. Tell them again. Where the hell Friday? What am I Friday? And tonight. For Bible study. Come on. Y'all yeah, don't be on my head. Nope. Nah. I might. I'll think about it. Hey, for anybody that doesn't even know. Um, nah, bro. Um, anybody that doesn't know, we have Bible study tonight. And then on Friday, what they're talking about is. Um, do rats and bonnets, so we just really sit on Zoom, chat. Um, really, just like it's a conversation that we, you know, it's really we get to talk to each other and really get into the depth of like you know what's really on our mind with a, a biblical backing. Um, to the point where it's like you know why we do what we do, and how we can you know move on and 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 grow. Yeah, I don't, I'll think about it. But what's what have you picked up? Because of COVID, if COVID would have never happened, you would have never learned this thing or you would have never learned this skill. The willingness to be interrupted. So you know how I am when it comes to my mm-hmm. schedule. Like I'm doing this, this hour. Mm-hmm. Meetings go in. If we say the meetings go in at 1030, I'm about to try to slide <laughs> at 1029. Like, I love being on schedule. I love being on top of the time. And I like we all we talked about it before, but God's just birthed so many things, so many new things, mm-hmm. but whether it be ministry or opportunities or friendships, relationships, business partnerships in the midst of COVID. And so I've just had to learn how to be like you said, patient. Yeah, patient and also flexible. So mm-hmm. and you know I'm not the going out type of person. Like mm-hmm. people are like go to the club. No, I prefer not to. We can chill. Yeah. In my apartment, we could go somewhere and have an intimate setting, have some drinks, have some snacks, whatever. But I'm not the type of person that likes to be around a lot of people all the time. And so for me, COVID has birthed so many new friendships, new connections with people all around the world mm-hmm. through our Greater Works Power Prayer Group. And if y'all want to join that, that's what Kev was talking about. We have Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have Do Rags and Bonnets, which is a casual chat where we just chop it up on Fridays. Mm-hmm at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Sundays, we have prayer at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the link to join the Facebook group is in my Instagram bio. Um, I think it's like the sixth link down from my Linktree link. And so you can join the group, get access to all that. We're in Zoom in the same Zoom room every time. And you can also comment, post in the Facebook group, all those things. And so that has shown me, like, when God ordains something, just go with the flow. Right. So above all else, Y'all became my best friends and didn't even know it. That's how I feel, too. Like, I Appreciate love all y'all. All of y'all love all y'all. Um, but I think for me, it's just taught me how to just go with the flow and not be so strict on my schedule. And also, I will say, when, when God says go, say yes and move. Mm-hmm. Like, because I would be hesitant. I would be like, God, do I have to do that right now? You asked me to do this project over here. Why are you making me stop? Mm-hmm. I haven't completed this project and now you're trying to make me do something else but just it's increased my willingness to be flexible and move when God says move to a whole nother level I, I, I'm going to reiterate that because like everyone else everyone had plans we had set plans where it's like <laughs> like we want to do this 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 part here we want we want to go here and the thing is there's a lot of things that we cannot control and like i think it goes into the next you know segment it was as in like perspective like you know we really thought we had it all planned out on our time when there was this you know this greater power this greater thing that was like yeah you can plan that all you want but I got I got some different plans for you, you know. It's, it's, right. it's a whole thing that switches up, and the thing is, like that perspective. Okay, like, like making, like doing what you can with what you have right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Like being able to like really get in depth with. Like, okay, right now, I would say for sometimes like I don't have traveling as my go to, and like that's what made me. Like I was like for some people that know, like I traveled a lot, and like at that time it was like, dang. You know, I'm the person that travels, like, that's who I am, this and that. But then when traveling stopped, then I had to be like, dang, did I just lose myself? Or, like, is this a part of me anymore? And so, it's like, you, I think everyone had to really just dig deep inside. It's like, okay, what really makes me, 
you know, me because right now all I have is me in my bedroom. You know, I go outside to work out, you know, I might go out to the store or anything, but like all in all, like we really just have what we have right now in, in our homes, in our places. I know some people are still working, but the thing is, you know, it's still a different atmosphere when we're working now, you know, more than ever. So it's a lot of different things with like perspective and like, I, you know, I value traveling even more than I ever did, you know, like now we can't, <laughs> we can't travel our own free will. So once they open those doors out, you know, I'm, I'm taking every breath in. I hope people are starting to take more pictures. Not, not even on like the professional note, but it's like, hey, think of these memories, you know, like make memories with people and like being able to, to really enjoy time and like the perspective on life and like how valuable life is because people are dropping off quickly. Like people are really, really, are really, really like dropping off just because of COVID. Like you think you're healthy one moment, the next thing you know, you have COVID and you know, because it, like, I know it hasn't affectedly directed me. I haven't affected me di- directly, but indirectly, people around me have like passed, or you know, friends and family have passed from COVID nineteen. Yeah, thirty. Oh yeah, still sticks you with me. No, hey. Honestly, because my thing is, I think a little bit of our COVID has shown us like, hey, some we're not on the same level on when it comes to to that uh, that cleanliness. <laughs> like honestly and truly, like there's some people that just don't care. Like I went to Walmart the other day. You know, I'm all masked up, like hand sanitizer out there, I touch everything. And there's some people in there with like some newborns with no mask, zero nada. And I was just like, okay, like it. Yeah, I know this is a whole virus going around right here. So it's like, how does that even like, like you said, like the life of like cleanliness or like, you know, your your just personal hygiene because like, I mean, like my mom, she always put hand sanitizer in the car just in general. Like just, we have hand sanitizer in the car. We have the wipes in the car. Granted, you know, it's not made after everything we touch, but it's like you, you are aware that, hey, hand sanitizer, you know, wash your hands is this a decent thing to do, like, at the, the bare minimum, you know? Right. And I think that that community basis of, like, you know, you need to keep your distance from me is, is going to be really, really heavy. That's a big fact. I mean, for me now, it's like, I don't know. I'm tempted to just keep on a mask for a solid three months even after they lift the quarantine because – I don't know if it's truly gone. Children under three can't wear masks. They need to be in the house. Yeah, I'm, why? Why is your three year? Why is why is your newborn in the, in Walmart in the first place? Like, I'm sorry, and I know it's difficult. I know some people's situations are different. Like, they might not have a babysitter, you know, a, a sniffing another, and you know, to watch the kids. And you know, definitely don't leave your kids in the car. Like, we're not doing that. But like, I understand like the difficulties behind it, but. Um, is there, I mean, I guess, hey, honey, this is a question. I know it's a little off topic, but like, is there anything that people can do to protect their child in a way that, you know, if you need, you have to take your child to Walmart? Like, is there any, per, you know, precautions around there, and, you know, around that? I don't know, Daniel, I'm asking you that too. Do you know? Now, you know, I don't know anything about protecting a child. I don't have <laughs> yeah, children. I mean, I mean, not you don't have children, but maybe if you came across some information, because I've always wondered about that. And I know, that, like, you could, because I know, like, well, Amazon does their, you know, their grocery shopping, too, that you can send it to your house. That's what I like a burrito. <laughs> Sometimes, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, it, and that's, I think that's another thing is, like, uh, we all, we as a community, there's ways that we can all, you know, be able to help each other. And I think that's one of the things that we've learned is that there's a lot of things you can do for your community, you know, without, um, Oh, that's a serious thing. I thought she was joking, but yeah, cool. <laughs> wrap your hey, wrap your kids up. Or tell your friends to wrap their kids up in a like a burrito. Uh, that's a good point. But well, I, I never knew that. I don't have kids, but um, yeah, this is like you can definitely be able to help people from a distance, not necessarily have to be in contact with certain people. I agree. I definitely agree. Now, just the kids, because their immune systems aren't as strong as adults, so you definitely want to take the precautionary measures recommended to keep them safe. Because that's the last thing you want is a kid to catch COVID, or I don't know. That's that's a tough pill to swallow. 
And anyone who's lost anyone to COVID or who's battling with the symptoms, asymptomatic, what have you, waiting to get tested, we're praying for you, keeping you in our prayers. We hope things turn around. Um, we hope you get your joy back, your smile back, and everything is better than it was before. So how how, how do you keep a smile during during this COVID? Like, what's what's like that that mental you know challenge because it, it's mentally draining you know at the end of the day it's like yo we're really going through a time where it's you rough most definitely i had a conversation earlier today a business conversation and we were talking about how every uh 10 years or so there's some type of pandemic or some type of world really? catastrophe that shakes life as we know it and oftentimes it takes death to put life into perspective so mm -hmm. you have to lose something you have to be into a a situation where it's all or nothing for you to really realize how beautiful your life is and how many things you have to be grateful for. And so for me personally, watching the the magnitude or the toll, the death toll continue to rise and the death rate continue to rise is blowing my mind. But for me, I just put a smile on taking the 24 hours that are given to me. I'm mm -hmm. big on that scripture that says, cast all your cares on the Lord for he cares for you. If it's going to stress me out, God, here you go. You could take it. Mm -hmm. I ain't even going to try to bear the weight of it. I'm not even going to try to put my focus there because I know mm -hmm. I still have things I need to do throughout the day. And so I meditate. Oftentimes I'll meditate. I'll be still. I'll be quiet to just find peace because for me, I've learned that I can only produce from a state of peace. I don't produce from a state of chaos. I don't produce from a state of anxiety or constant worry. I have to have peace. And my peace is rooted in the fact that I'm not in control. Mm -hmm. So my hands are off the steering wheel. Though I may be in the passenger seat of the car and have my eyes, I have a first-person perspective or point-of-view shot on what's coming ahead or what's what I'm heading toward, I'm not driving. Mm -hmm. so and, I yeah. steps. And, like, and it's one of the things is like, you know, when it talks to, you know, God is like, yo, you can only control what you can control. And then that you can only control what you can control. And you, the, the worries got to go. Like, you know, a lot of the stuff is like, there's some things we cannot control. Like you could, you cannot control a pandemic, how you get affected by this. But you can control what you do, how you know what you, you even involve yourself. Because like me, I'm not a big news person because we all know like, from from like the surface level, the news channels and all that like it's it's catered a certain way to make you feel a certain way. And I just like I'm a type of person that like, <laughs> like I, I really, I really have to like. Like I'm the type like there's there's a certain way like I even like in marketing there's certain colors that affect your body there's a certain colors that affect you know how you think about a certain thing so like like with COVID and like you know just learning about it is like it's like yeah how you have, how you react to it and like what you do with it because at the end of the day um like we said we just gotta work with what we have and the thing is we really have to watch what we we involve ourselves with like at this moment in time like we can we, we legit have like when you know how everyone says like yo we have the same 24 hours like you know you get to do what you get to do with your your 24 hours like yo if everyone like i mean in the sense like granted we have our essential workers they don't have a true like not have they have a choice but they have to work they're still working but like a lot of the country has their time off like or they have more time available and the thing is, is like what you do with that extra time, you know, it's a choice that you have for yourself. Like, you want to read a book? Cool. You want to watch movies? Cool. I do both, but I do one more than the other. You know, you know, and that's the thing is like, I really, what you want to do with your life is, is like, is you get to first of all, you know, ask God for that that direction because then you ain't trying to do something that is against His will. That he's gonna be, he, you know, the thing is, God will easily, easily be like, yo, that's not the right thing. Like, and it's a sign, you know, why, God, why does it keep happening to me? Like, yo, did you ask God about why you did this and did that? Because, um, I mean, clearly, like, some things, like, yo, that, hey, God, I wanna open up this business, but that business is not the right direction that God wants you to move in. So it's like, there's a reason why certain things do not work for you and certain things, you know, work for others. So it's just like that really that that kind of that conversation has to be had, you know, within yourself. And, yo, we, we stuck in the house and, you know, you know, making making the best out of it is is what we can do. And uh, keeping that mindset, I think the people aspect of it 
has you know helped because it's easy to get caught in your own thoughts at this time. Like you really, like, you can really get caught in your own thoughts because you. I've had my days like this quarantine. I was like, yo, all right, I'm tired. Like, I don't feel like working anymore. But then there's like also that one thing is like, okay, what wakes you up to like you know get get out of your bed? And, like you know, what's that one thing that you willing to you know, go to to that end, you know, to the deep end, to the, the top end to get that thing done, you know. So that's really, that's what's, like, pushing me. And I would say my last habit, I'll be, like, the, the working out part of it helps. Like, just being able to go outside to the point where, like, you know, just walking around the block, that, that helps a lot, which is I don't have to be in the house all day long. Like, I don't, I don't like going to the store. Like, you know, no one should really want to go to the store, but – at least you can do is go outside, do a walk, you know, go run, you know, jog, have a picnic. I mean, I know some of these cities that these parks are really, really packed, but like you don't have to go to a park to have a picnic. Just go to get some, gla- you know, some grass. So there's just different things like that that's helped me for sure. I agree. Kev, what day do you think they're going to open up outside? I'm not going to hold you. Um, See, the thing is, um, yeah, <laughs> all right, all right, honey, we'll talk all to right. you. See you later. I'm going to get to that comment um, to put together food boxes. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of uh, organizations that are doing the volunteering um, piece of it, and that's really, it puts it in perspective, really, to see, like, who's really doing it. Hey, honest, hey, I'm, I'm going to jump on that real quick. I really wish the direction of the country took the, a more collaborative effort on this, like, imagine, like, almost in, like, the sense of China, like, China shut down everything, you know, all these other countries. Kev, you froze. Kev, you froze. Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, um, no, I mean, the thing is, I wish it was more collaborative, because I hate that, that Texas is wide open right now. And Virginia isn't. And, like, that's where, like, that, that really, that disengaging, like, how can we do that? And the thing is, you know, that goes back to the Constitution where the states are, you know, power on the states and then the federal government can only do but so much. You know, that goes into that deep conversation there where it's like, I really wish there's a more collective effort from the federal government to help regulate it against everywhere because, what California is doing, like, you see, like, the colleges are starting to close for the fall semester. And the thing is, what does that tell you? You know, like, I really think it's going to be, like, I know Virginia has uh, has uh, put together, like, this phase program. But the thing is, it's like, if, you know, Virginia is on phase two, and then California is on phase eight. We're not on the same page. So I'm giving you a long answer to say it's going to be a while. I'm thinking at least a year before things get, um, yeah, California shut down for another three, like, their hardcore shut down. I know Virginia, like, they even, like, even parts of Virginia not even on the same page. They said, like, they're saying Northern Virginia is on a, um, what's it called? Northern Virginia is not entering the phase two, but, like, southern or southern regions of Virginia has gone into that phase two, like, opening up this Friday or so. So, it's like, all of this is really, really confusing, and like, I don't think I'm no, I'm no health person, but I don't see it going pretty well for like at least another year. Like, really, I don't, I, I don't. If I, to put a date on it, I, I say, I say September. September. At least, I, I mean, don't... like the. I mean, I say phases though. I say, I say phases. Like, to be back into normal, normal, like, normal as in, like, yeah, i say a year and a half. Okay. I think part of the reason for the difference in sex in Virginia is that Virginia's local economy can sustain more than Texas. I feel you. That's Quantanetta. Um, she's a member of the Dope for the Grease team. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. you. I don't know. I mean, Texas is open, more open than Virginia. Kev told me something new because I didn't know about the phases and I don't get on social media that often. I don't watch mm-hmm. the news. I usually find out about <laughs> whatever the COVID updates are from family right. 
uh, well, only one Mari body said 2021. I feel you. I honestly think this is going to be a two year thing of us transitioning back into going back outside or them opening up outside because one, there's no vaccine. Um, two, not everyone's been tested. Yeah. And three, because it's so contagious, you can't necessarily contain it. It'll be, I mean, and I think about the college campuses. A lot of my clients are talking to them every day. Yeah, yeah, to your process. I, I, you're on a college campus, you're touching everything. Like, we in the dorm yeah. room, they already call it a Petri dish anyway. One person gets the flu on the whole. Everybody, not everybody's going to get it, but everybody's on edge. Like, ooh, I hope I don't get it, whatever. I remember that, being in college and it's flu season. It happens, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's very wise for the colleges to do that. But if it's a two-year transition from where we are right now until them opening back up outside, opening outside again, that gives us time to build sustainable business models, sustainable practices and habits that allow us to flourish as our economy will flourish virtually if we conduct a lot of business, a lot of um, coaching, whatever, teaching, what have you, online. That, that business model, that part of everyone's business or so that lifestyles will be in place and so when we come back outside, I think it will also help us innovate and be more strategic and appreciative of life in outdoors, being able to hug people. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between it, because like like you you're bringing up business models within like you know actual organizations and businesses, but it's like you also have that business person, that personal business plan that you do, like how you even move throughout society, like. I was going out to Walmart, and like Walmart has even upgraded their their um their self checkout to be contactless. So you just scan your items, put it in a bag, and then you're able to scan the app and pay through it through the phone. So um, where did that just say that we're in the mail? Yeah, that's a big point, Jacob. I didn't I didn't know that. That's interesting. I would be interested to see the article or where that came from. Um, Quantanada said colleges would also have to adjust their business models. That's so true. Mm -hmm. you go back outside, you're going to get stuck than what you were sicker than what you were before. That's a fact. I don't know. If, see, this is what's raised a question. I've been talking with my clients a lot about this, and I've been I'm finally beginning to catch up on a lot of my work now. Um, but they're like, what's the point in going to college? I, I'm paying. Okay, so for instance, GW George Washington University in DC, right? That costs a solid 60K mm -hmm. a year, right? And if they cut out room and board for the fall 2020 semester, you you decrease the cost of attendance by probably a solid twenty five to $30,000. So now tuition right. is still a solid 10 to 15K. And colleges had conversations where they said, well, we're just going to increase the cost of tuition to supplement what we're losing because of room and board. And now it's like, you're going to charge mm -hmm. me more to go to school online from my living room. It yeah, it, it, it's gonna be wild. It's a business. What if you? What if college was no longer exist? Like it no longer existed. Everything was online. Because the value proposition goes down drastically. I mean, I, I'm gonna put it like this. There's a lot of content. I mean, granted, you uh, YouTube is not filtrated to the point where it's like all like to a point that has a standard, like, you can post anything on YouTube, but, like, YouTube was the first, like, I would say that, that YouTube is the first open college, literally, that you could learn a lot of information in, in any subject. It, it doesn't have a curriculum to it, you know, it doesn't have a, a set standard on YouTube, but when I say there's so much information on these online platforms in the sense of, like, people that already done this and done this before and posting it within social media, you know, YouTube is a form of social media, so it's like, hey, that social media aspect of having things online is it's really going to change the game for colleges in itself. Like, you know, where does that do? So true. Oh, oh, sure. and the good point. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good point. How do you like, get... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you were to take oh, a gap year, right? Second. No, I was going to say, if you were in college, like, you graduated from high school this month, right? And you're going to take a gap year. What would you spend your gap year doing? Doing something I love. I'm just like that. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think, it, like, it, it'll be doing something I love. Um, Like, honestly and truly, it'll just be, I wish, like, I I wonder if I would have picked up a camera in high school, how my life would have even been. 
But like if you it like I, I was I just feel like this one thing that I really was intrigued about going into college was robotics. So I was I was doing a lot of robotics, building little machines that you could remote, you know control with the remote controls. So like I would have been the type where I would have start building more and more robotics. That's what I think I would have done if I would have had a gap year. Granted, I mean that would turn into me doing more and more robotics. But it's like hey, that's something I would have enjoyed. Um, sports would have been something really big. Um, I, I didn't go to school for sports, but I think sports was it would have gave me some more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was I really like robotics, so that that technology aspect of it. And the thing is, as we know, that technology aspect you you can learn a skill in college, but a lot of it is out there for the taking already. You know, what about you? What would have been what have been your uh, your gap year experience look like? My gap year, if I went back to where I was coming out of high school, oh, man, I would have just practiced the art of speaking. Like, my YouTube channel, I would have been putting putting out yeah. videos every single day because I love to speak. And I can mm -hmm. speak from anywhere. I have my camera, I have Wi-Fi, I can upload. So I would have just been mm -hmm. speaking and writing all the time. And at the time, I think, yeah, I remember when I was a high school senior, I started a YouTube channel called Stay Focused, Determined, and Prepared. I had an email called Stay FDP. I had oh, wow. a Twitter account. That was my Twitter handle, Stay FDP. Say focus, determine, and prepare. And I was ready to go. Like, I was ready to go mm -hmm. full steam ahead right. on my YouTube channel. And then God was like, no, wait. And for me, it broke my mm -hmm. heart because I'm like, well, why are you telling me to wait? Like, I'm ready to do the YouTube channel while I'm in school. But he shifted my focus to scholarships. And so right. my gap year, I would have not worried about money. Money would have been the last thing on my mind. I would have right. just focused on perfecting my craft and getting really, really good at it and marketing myself, building a following and then monetizing it. What I think would have been the, the really game changer is the perspective on parenting within college. Because yeah. a lot, I would say, I would, I would even bring in my, and my thing is in college, just getting out the house. Like, hey, you got to get out the house or you got to work or you got to do something. Like, imagine that gap year would have been just your parents or, you know, some type of higher, you know, whether it's an organization or somebody just like investing into you heavily, like hey, you don't have to work. I mean, yes, you you will learn, you have to learn responsibility. Like you know, granted, a, a form of working would have been um, a learn a learn responsibility of the you know the real world experience that type of thing. But like saying that you have to work to pay bills or you have to grow up fast, I would have said no. I I'd have been like hey like. I, I kind of think of I think of myself with like the parent if, if I was in this situation and I had a, a kid that hey you don't have to go to college right now my thing is okay let me invest like you don't have to work you don't have to have a job but the thing is I'm going to invest something into that that is productive you know in a way so if it's productive mentally it does not have to have the physical attribute of money and like, you don't have to be making money but you you can be building on something you know, eventually that could provide for you and then, you know, down the road. So I think if, if I'm the parent or, like, my mom or dad would have invested in me during my gap year, like, if I, like you know, I, tell, I talked about robotics. So the thing is, imagine if my parents would have been like, you know what, Kev, you like robotics so much, we buying you this, we buying you that, this, this, that. Granted, it's fun to me already, but now I'm building on something. So it's like, okay, Kev, you like robotics so much, this is online job that you can have that talks about robotics. I mean, I don't know, but that's would have been more of like, even from the the parent perspective of like, because granted, I mean, we're still young at that age, like, oh, I'm, you know, you just turn 18 or 17 and you talk about a gap year and you get to do whatever you want to do technically. So like, that's why I think that's where the parents part of it comes so big, you know, so much of into play of it because they have to, and my, I would say that parent will have to invest into them. Like, you don't have to get out the house. You can stay in, in the career for another year. You know, in that in that way. That's a big fact. That made me think about it, just putting this into perspective. So we talked about colleges and their business model. What makes a college mm -hmm. business model, like, flourish or the growth of it, what accelerates their growth is money. You pump money into a mm -hmm. college system, the opportunities open wide, the doors open wide up. That's why you have endowments and all these things. Now, let's look at a family model or a household model. What do you pump into the family to make them flourish and excel? Mm -hmm. It's love and support. When you have your parents' love and support, or if you have the support of those who you really care about and people who care about you, 
you will conquer things that you never thought you would conquer. You will do things you never thought you would mm -hmm. do. And so my biggest, I guess, ask of everyone is just to pour an extra dose of support and love into those people that you really care about and ask them to chase their dreams. Even if you're not taking a technical gap year because you're not a student, you're not a, a college student or a prospective college student, you can still take that time to pump that love into yourself and that support into yourself. Encourage your mom to test her boundaries to do something she's never done. She might fall in love with it. My biggest thing is for people to stop focusing on money and just focus on the things that you're naturally good at, the things God's gifted mm -hmm. you in. And he's asked, he's equipped you to do phenomenally well without having to focus on a dollar. Because he made me think about mm -hmm. this myself. Stop focusing on the quantity of my money and focus on the quality of my service. And the better you become at your craft, people will leave you tips that blow your mind. Like you may charge $300 for a product or service, and then someone leaves mm -hmm. you a $1,000 tip because you did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Don B, like, he spoke on it. I mean, those gifts, because the thing is, I think in society, we 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 have gifts in college in the same category. Like, you know, it, it should be gifts first. Then if your gift is telling you to come to college, then yes, cool. But there's different ways you can cultivate your gift, and it does not have to be college. I think we've learned that, you know, going through school, like me and you have learned it, it's like, hey, Technically, what what did college do for me in the sense of my gift, you know, my particular gift? I learned this. We learned skills. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we can't argue that. We learned skills, but did we cultivate into our specific gift? And, you know, right. our answers are all different, but it's saying, like, hey, my gift was not in mind when I was talking about gift. Like, you know, my gift wasn't my gift wasn't in mind when I was talking about college and my major, you know. Right. Granted, if I like building things, then I'm going to go back and invest into me building things but that that's the whole difference between what college does for you that person so um I, that gap year thing is pretty is a, is a good it's a decision that has to be made pretty early i mean i know for the people that are involved in, in schools now um what, what so what would be your 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 opinion on that i mean i know if, if it goes along with your business you know you don't have to you know speak on it right now Yeah. Hold on, it was breaking up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, my social media timer went off. Pause me. Um, but I was saying there you go. for me, you said what would be my perspective on the gap year? Take it. Take it and run with it because though you may be fearful, oh I'm not gonna know what I'm doing, I'm gonna make so many mistakes. Yeah. That's the yeah. best position to be in when you're making a lot of mistakes because yeah. you're gonna learn. You learn like never before. Yeah. And I also, we just talked about comparing business models, a college business model versus a family and household model. But think about this. They say it all the time. Money makes the world go round. No, it doesn't. Love makes the world go round. If we get back to a grassroots position where it's all about love and we're not focused on a dollar, it will trickle down into so many things because love is a language. Love is a universal language. It's the language everyone can speak. If you love me authentically, if you love me for who I am, I mean, I'll show you, I'll give you what I have if you just appreciate mm -hmm. me. And money is tangible, it's paper, and that's the thing about it. You think about love yeah. for a person, appreciating a person versus appreciating money and looking for, to get everything from money. You can burn money, and then it's no longer existent. But if you cultivate someone, if you love someone, they'll pour into other people, and therefore it'll change the whole world. And so... If you have an opportunity to take a gap year, take a gap year and be willing to fall flat on your face so that you can learn how to stay on your own two feet. And I'm down. And I life. think, and I, I was saying um, that is like, you know, with this conversation needs to be on the, on the parents' perspective too, but it's like, you know, letting your child, you know, um, uh, fall flat on their face. But the thing is, it's like, hey, that's a life lesson to learn. And the thing is, they don't have to do it alone either. Like, you know, we're, you know, sometimes we can be in a space where we we have to go through things by ourselves. But it's like, you know, when you do that young, at the age where, like, hey, you could still be considered under your parents, you know, under arm and still in their household. Imagine, like, the thing is, imagine by, like, you know, growing within your, your parents' household at a young age and still knowing that they can have your back like 110%, where like now it's like, yo, you grown, you gotta do it by your own, like this and that. But it's like, 
I think that perspective when it comes to like, you know, the parent aspect of it is really, really, you know, really, really key. Um, so true. Yeah. That, so true. That non-traditional. Yeah. Like, and, and the thing is, uh, one thing I, I love about it is that the normal that we're used to is not going to be normal anymore. Like, like my, I think we've used the wrong language even talking about this, this, this conversation that like, Hey, when we open up outside, when they're getting back to normal, we're, we keep looking for this normal after COVID and it's not going to be there. Like it's going to be a lot of things. Cause my thing is even when I come in with like, I would say technology space, like the fact that they've made new technology to help during this time, they're not going to take that technology away. Like all the apps and stuff, you know, like like I was talking about the Walmart thing when Walmart is they brought in new um technology for their self checkout, like with the using the apps, they're not gonna take that technology away. You don't have now you don't have to use, you know, that technology of like, you know, um just the different things and how things are implemented. Like a lot of I know a lot of people are teleworking. Teleworking is now a, a point where it's like I I I even changed that. I'm not gonna finish that thought because I'm gonna go back to my mom, how they're using um kids learning in school right now. Their kids are actually learning. I mean, granted we don't know the skill level they're actually learning at, but my mom was saying that since kids are now being able to learn, now they don't have to take snow days. Right, right. Like, Big yeah. So now yeah. so now that they now that we learn that hey, we've put in a system to where we have to that now we have put in the systems so now we can work from home. Because there's certain things since COVID. Yeah, exactly. You know, and there's certain things that like gonna be put in place. There's gonna be certain technologies that'll be put in place that they're not gonna take away. So that changes the new normal. Like us when we used to go through school, we used to have snow days. Right. That's not gonna be a normal thing when we go outside of COVID because now these kids, these teachers have learned that hey, we can make a system or a curriculum that involves online learning with you know during a snow day or like you know if the lights go out at school and school's closed for a year or like a, a whole month they were like oh y'all remember back in 2020 during COVID-19 we we did all online right. that's that's the no, that that's the new normal you know we're not going back to normal where kids you know have snow days like that's that's non-existent anymore and it's crazy yeah. to think about it I love it though. I love it because it's forcing everyone to innovate. And I think God has truly hit the reset button on the world and life. Like start over, start from the bare bones. Yeah. Don't try to keep doing what you're already doing. Like fall back into only having the necessities of life instead of having necessities and extravagance. How do you function? How can you stay? How can you remain in a state of contentment when you only have what you need? You don't have what you want. You just have what you need. Prosper in that position, grow in that position, flourish in that position. And I think it just it's good for everybody in my opinion. That that's that that back in twenty twenty, like this is gonna be a statement a statement in our lives where it's like y'all remember back in twenty twenty when the COVID nineteen came? Like it's really it's happening like right now. Like the reset is is happening right now. Whatever is coming after this is we can't imagine it. The best thing is that we could try to be as prepared as possible for life after COVID. Because the thing is, there's going to be a lot of things that change because of this. And is whether we can just sit back and let it be. Because, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of crazy things that we think about. It's like, wow, before COVID-19, this was this. During COVID-19, this was this. And now after COVID-19, this is this. So it's like, you know, we've... We, we, we're moving along. I mean, granted, on the health aspect of whether they find a vaccine of, like, when that is, but, like, the, just the technology, like, Zoom. Um, have a good one. But um, right, thank sure. you for joining. Have a good one. Um, so, but my thing is, is, like, now it's even the conversation of Zoom. Do I really need to meet face-to-face with you, or we just don't go to Zoom? Zoom. I mean, it's, <laughs> like, it's one of those things where, like, where there's a lot of meetings that, like even meetings and working is like okay, this can be reconsidered. Like, do we really have to be in a meeting right now, or do we just send a little voice memo? You know, all this different technology. They're not gonna take it that away because it's create. You know, like there's gonna be a lot of things. There's gonna be a lot of things that that really shake up. You know what we think the normal would be afterwards, and like it's hard to 
it's hard to think about posts or like the future like it's like it takes a certain somebody to be like hey cars gonna be flying you know like that type of thing right like like imagine like 19 my sugar my sugar. <laughs> so like but like imagine imagine like the imagine back in 1966 at the recession or you know i don't know the, the day of the recession but i'm saying that back in the day and when the, the recession was is going on did they think about a car that'll be driving itself a tesla like no, you know what I'm saying like all that stuff is like these big ideas. Like when Steve Jobs made a, a cell phone that would be as small as like we're we're talking face to face like this. My grandma would have been like, "Yo, what? What, you, <laughs> what do you mean this will be? You know, like like my grandma, my 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 like great aunts and great grandmas would have been like, "What you mean? I could talk to you from face to face." Like my grandma. Right now, uh, she has a doorbell that she can see through, like the door, the, the doorbell video chat things. Like right. she has one of those things. So, like, just imagine like how we don't feel back in you know twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, where it's like, yo, this is what we used to do. This is what it is now. Like you know, FaceTime, like all this stuff is really making us think the big picture to the point where like, yeah, we just joking about it. there's gonna be flying cars. The next thing you know, twenty years from now, it's gonna be like, yo, this flying cars. Who would ever thought? Mm-hmm. So true. So hindsight is twenty twenty. I think I'm just grateful for this season. I mean, you see that? You heard you said twenty twenty. The year twenty twenty. Yeah. I mean, I'm... big fat. Ah. What's that? Um, <laughs> yeah. You don't talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't talk about. Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty. Watch this. This is gonna be crazy. This is gonna be a crazy time where we speaking on this. It's gonna be like, yo, twenty twenty was a crazy time. That's a big fact. I mean, it's so all love. I've enjoyed this combo though. I just, I'm excited. No, I'm for grateful sure. for this. This COVID, though. I mean, everything is good and bad. Everything has its good and its bad things. But there are mm-hmm. so many good things that have come out of COVID, along with the bad, that will help us be right. better people. That's the biggest thing. Are we making progress as a society? Are we making progress as a generation? Are we making progress as a nation, as a community, as a race, as a collective? What have you? Are we making progress? Yeah, and I think that's the self-evaluation part where you do it individually and then collectively we do it. So true. Kev, you have anything? I don't, I don't even have another word. <laughs> No, I'm good. I love. It. I I was just challenged. Like we can get a challenge to the people real quick. Um, I would say just challenge to think beyond the things. I would say think beyond normal, like some of that exaggerated thoughts that we may have. Just put some truth to it. Like, hey, this might happen. You know, this like don't don't count yourself out when it comes to those conversations because anything that we think of right now could possibly become true. Um, like we say, flying cars, we don't know. But we, we can see it's closer from the back. We're closer to the end than we were the back end. So right. what would you challenge the people? Challenge, I challenge you just to take up at least 10 minutes every day to just meditate and be still. Um, mm-hmm. And not run through every day. But just meditate a little bit and be still. Grandpa, I guess... <laughs> yeah, they come yeah, for you, I'm, well, I'm glad you know. Uh, I'm with, yeah, I got these blackout curtains and everything. It's funny. Um, nah, I appreciate it. I'm so weak. <laughs> nah, I but I, yeah, I say, I say, yeah, life after COVID, just, uh, just, just think about it. All right, and I'll talk to you guys. All right. All right, love y'all. All right, peace out, y'all. Peace, y'all.